The following materials are prepared before inserting an intravenous fluid line. Non-sterile gloves. An intravenous catheter equipped with a three-way tap. Take note that intravenous catheters come in different gauge sizes. The lower the gauge number, the bigger the needle. Sizes usually range from 24 gauge, which is most commonly used in paediatrics, to 16 gauge, mostly used in the intensive care unit or the operating room. 18 is the most commonly used gauge. This size may be used to administer blood and also allows drugs to be administered quickly. Here, a 20 gauge intravenous catheter and a 22 gauge intravenous catheter are shown. A tourniquet. Take note that here, a disposable tourniquet is shown, generally used for patients who have to be treated in isolation. An infusion set. A bag of intravenous fluid. Take note that in this demonstration, normal saline was used. Intravenous catheter dressing. Alcohol, used as a skin disinfectant. Gauze swabs. A sharps container. Also take note of the separate three-way tap which may be necessary if the intravenous catheter is not equipped with one. An intravenous line stopper. A vacutainer needle in case blood samples need to be taken as well. And two laboratory tubes. Prior to inserting the intravenous catheter, the intravenous fluid bag is prepared by spiking it with the infusion set. The intravenous fluid bag has an intravenous tubing port and a medication port that has a silicon filling which closes it off immediately after removing the needle. Care must be taken to always check the medication label for the name of the medication, the dosage and the expiry date before use in order to prevent medication errors. Take note of the infusion set. It has a spike which is covered by a plastic cap a drip chamber, which shows the infusion rate during infusion, the additional medication ports on the infusion set that are equipped with lure locks. Take note that not all infusion sets are equipped with additional medication ports. The two pinch clamps, which may be used to close off the intravenous line completely, and the roller clamp, which is used to regulate the infusion rate. If the wheel is rolled towards the narrow side, the line is clamped off and if the wheel is rolled towards the broad side, the line is opened. Finally, take note of the intravenous catheter connection on the infusion set, which is used to connect the infusion set to the intravenous catheter itself. The plastic cap protecting the port of the intravenous fluid bag is removed. The plastic cap protecting the spike of the infusion set is removed. And the spike is inserted into the intravenous tubing port on the intravenous fluid bag. After inserting the spike, the drip chamber is rotated 180 degrees to allow the chamber to fill up. It is advised to rotate the drip chamber 180 degrees in order to prevent bubble formation in the infusion set. It is advised to slightly open the intravenous catheter connection cap prior to inserting the spike in order to create an open system. In a closed system, the fluid will not flow. The connection cap is usually already slightly opened as a default setting when it comes out of the sterile packaging.